What is the basal ganglia doing? All right. So the basal ganglia is a motor gatekeeper. All right. So if you need somebody to keep your keys <laughs> to your car, <laughs> give it to your basal ganglia. <laughs> but anyhow, that's just a joke. Okay, so, <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> All right, so the basal ganglia is the motor gatekeeper. All right, so it's gonna be important for doing two things. Two things, all right. All right, so it's gonna be initiating motor functions that will be executed. So it's gonna be initiating motor functions. And then it's gonna be inhibiting voluntary motor function. So it's initiating and it's inhibiting. It's starting and stopping, all right. Motor functions. All of this is just voluntary. So, if I, like, I want to move my arm, so it in and it starts to move it, and then it stops it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Voluntary. The cerebellum is involuntary. Okay, so it's going to be initiating and it's going to be inhibiting. Now, if there's a lack of inhibition then we're gonna be moving all over the place, right? So it's gonna be uh, positive motor signs. And that makes sense, right? You know, if you don't have any restraint, I mean, you're gonna go all out, right? You're gonna break all the chairs and smash everything in the room. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dr. Wilson just gave a little um, analogy of like how you wanna visualize the basal ganglia. So he's like, oh, you know, you wanna see it like as a computer, right? Um, and um, so you want to see the basal ganglia as, I guess, the, the thing in the computer that's executing the programs and then that's shutting down the programs. Um, so it's starting and then it's stopping. So it's starting the programs and then it's stopping the programs, right? Now, uh, this is just a hypothetical situation, right? So if, you, if the computer is on, the basal ganglia is supposed to be turning on the applications and turning it off. Now, if you have a whole bunch of pop-ups coming out of nowhere, like just pop-ups. Um, so um, this is kind of like a way to visualize schizophrenia, right? So in schizophrenia, you have uncontrolled movements, right? So the, the gatekeeper or the basal ganglia is not functioning properly, essentially. So it's not doing its job. Right. It's supposed to be turning things on and turning things off. And because it's not doing that, then we're getting all this crazy stuff occurring. We're getting all these pop-ups. So just an analogy that he gave. All right. Just to further the point of the function of the basal ganglia. Cool? Yeah. All right. So this is a repeat of what we already said. All right. So when we're looking at the basal ganglia, we're going to have input and an output. So a quick question for you, uh, Mara. So what, what, is the, what is the output? The output, um, substantial number of pars, reticularis, and bulbus pallidus internus. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. So, Ben, what then is the um, what then is the input? Um, caudate nucleus and potamus. All right. So, what is the type of neuron that they're using? Medium spiny. What is the type of neurotransmitter looking? Okay. Yeah. So, what is that? Cytotory. In inhibitory. What is it inhibiting? It's inhibiting what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at it. Was, I didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, dang. Wow. You're supposed to be like, I mean, like. Oh, just off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, you're not supposed oh, to be it's looking. It's not there yet. So I yeah, you got it. You got it. That's why we're doing this. So that it can get in your head. You understand? So as far as movement was inhibiting or was it? It's inhibiting your outputs, which are your DPI and your substantial micro retina. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. This was actually there too, so I could have cheated. I was giving you a second try. <laughs> I was giving her a second try. <laughs> but anyhow, okay, so um, no worries. Okay, so we're having the inputs and outputs. So we just mentioned the inputs, right? 
So it turns out that the striatum, right, the striatum is receiving its input from the cortex. All right. The striatum is receiving its input from the cortex. So striatum receives its input from the cortex, then the striatum relays it to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra reticularis, reticulata, whatever. Cool? So um, striatum receives input from the cortex, the substantia nigra, the thalamus, and the intralaminar nuclei. So it's not just from the cortex. So it's the cortex, substantia nigra, thalamus, Intralaminar, intralaminar nuclei, but it's predominantly the cortex, though. All right, and all the all the information coming from the cortex to the striatum. All right, one second. Okay, so it's the cortex, substantia nigra. I know it's a little bit weird, or crazy, but uh, let's just go with the flow. Like just just swim. You know what I mean? Let's go with the current. You know? okay. okay, so thalamus uh, and an intralaminar nucleus or whatever. So all these guys are feeding into this guy or into this doorway or whatever. And um, now it's predominantly the cortex though. Because that's what we see here. We have the cortex feeding into the uh, um, striatum. Now notice that the signal is positive, right? Notice that it's positive, right? And it's not negative. So the information from the cortex is glutaminergic or excitatory. So the striatum was what? What was the striatum? Uh, inhibitory That's right. So then from the cortex, <coughs> from the cortex would be what, Carl? Excitatory. Exactly. Okay. 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 So now, specifically, um, so this is what um, Dr. Wilson mentions. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. So the striatum we're saying receives cortex, substantia nigra, thalamus, and intralaminar nuclei. Yeah. Predominantly the cortex. But isn't the substantia nigra the output? So is it kicking back information to the striatum? I think you know because again you. You know, this is not like a, a one-way road kind of a thing. Okay. Remember, because okay. there's a lot of different things going on. Okay. So. I just wanted to make sure I had the general flow right. The general yeah, flow. Yeah, there's a general, yeah, there is a general flow. And then out. But it's kicking some information back. Exactly. Okay. That's right. Doesn't that striatum, the pars compacta? Is the striatum the pars compacta? Not the striatum. I mean, the substantia nigra that's inputting to the striatum, the pars compacta. Oh. Mm. And that would be the dopamine aspect, not the pars reticularis. Oh yeah, you're actually she's actually onto a good point. You want you onto so, she's so actually she's actually onto a you're onto a very good point because that's actually further that's actually further down. That's a good point. You see, two heads are better than one. Where did it go? So compacta kicks the information back. So compacta. Is input to striatum. To striatum. Pars reticular. Pars reticular is output. Is output. Yeah. One fist in is right here. Okay. Substantia nigra um, compacta also feeds into the striatum, and also the cerebral cortex feeds into the uh, striatum. Which is why you they make the distinction when they're saying output to specifically say substantia nigra reticularis. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I thought was happening. Yeah. And yeah. I was trying to go because I thought you'd get to it, but then I saw us sort of switching topics and I didn't. I didn't actually notice this while I was going through this, but that's a good point. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I didn't notice the clear distinction and that one was actually like output, one was input. I, I didn't notice that. Even though I had this on here when I talked about it, I didn't, I didn't see it. I have a good eye. Okay. Um, so where are we at? Okay, so um, okay, so spe uh, Dr. Wilson talks about specifically where the putamen is receiving, um, or what is feeding into sp the putamen specifically, meaning like what is directly putting the input to the putamen, 
and what is directly put, giving inputs directly to the caudate. So for the putamen, the motor cortex is going to go into your putamen. All right. Remember that the putamen was next to your globus pallus. Remember that the caudate nucleus was in the lateral wall, the lateral ventricle. So the putamen receives input from your motor cortex, your premotor cortex, and your somatosensory cortex. Right? Then your, your caudate nucleus receives input from associational cortex and then um, frontal eye fields. This is on the slide. This is what he had on the slides. So we already said that um, for the striatum, right, it was medium spiny neurons. We already said that. We already said it was GABA inhibitory, low spontaneous activity. Question again. I'm yeah. so sorry. Go ahead, dude. No, go what? ahead, dude. Ask, 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 ask what is the associational cortex? It's probably one of these areas, brain areas. Okay, if but you that's look not at something like we all know, right? I mean, I think if you look at the map, you'll be able to, like, you know the little regions? You'll right. be able to see it. No, but it's not like a, a big thing that... I mean, I think you should have an idea that it's have there. An idea. Have you yeah, come like across it before? Area six, like, so four is the main one, and then six is association. Mm -hmm. So it's Broadman six mm -hmm. is association. Let association me Google this. Area? One second, let me Google this, and I'll, I'll like... Okay, so does everyone get on this? Mm -hmm. All right, so we talked about the... Op <coughs> We've already talked about the output, lobus pallidus, interna, and substantia nigra reticulata. So these guys are going to have large aspiny neurons. All right. So in contrast to the medium spiny neurons, these guys are going to have high, a high rate of spontaneous activity. All right. There's, there's still going to be GABA, GABAergic, GABAergic or whatever. Um, they're going to be inhibitory and they're going to be projecting to other places, right? 